welcome back to Obermatt Stock Investing in Europe. We have invested over the summer, 50,000 Swiss francs. We then made a summer break and we are back now to invest another 50,000 francs in stocks over the next 10 to 15 weeks. Because slowly in, slowly out, that's what safe investing is all about, is our uh, philosophy because then we profit from lower prices when the stock markets drop as well as from higher prices when they rise. There's a second video about that just recently when I said I lost uh, some money this summer. Let's have a look at the top 10 stocks by index. We have um, here on November 6 the CAC 40 uh, for France and we have an index for New Zealand since we want to invest in Europe, we're going to have a look at the uh, CAC 40 first, the 40 largest companies in France. Um, first, we have Bernard Ricard on the list of value shares. Value is actually a rating based on price earning ratio, price sales ratio, market to book ratio, and dividend yield. All together, you know, always measured relative to the peers of the company, gives us the rating, which means Bernard Ricard has better ratings, you know, these four ratings are better than 100% of its peers. That's quite good. Uh, but their safety is very bad, which means they may have too much debt for their cash flow. So I'm going to the next company, Societe General. I don't have to look at Schneider Electric because we already bought it. Let's have a look at Societe, Societe General, a bank, because we don't have a bank yet in the portfolio. Let's have a look at that. We looked at that already earlier. Let's go to the details. Let's look how this Consolidate, where these consolidated ranks come from. Well, I'm interested in the growth ranks because the 81 you know, rank for growth is quite unique uh, for European banks. And it turns out it actually doesn't come from revenue growth, it comes from profit growth. And it could just as well be that this rogue trader that they had a couple of years back, uh, you know, let the bank su suffer for a bit and they're now just back to normal. So I'm not so sure if that is really a good investment. Um, so I did something different. I'm going to our stock filter. Um, I reduce the companies to look at to the large companies. I didn't manage to get that for some reason. It's very slow today. So just the large companies, just the banks. So I have to, you know, unclick all that. I have to go all the way down to where I see financial companies, health. So consumer finance, diversified banks is what I'm you know, interested in, basically. I unselect all the countries except Western Europe. And what I have here is the top banks in Western Europe, because maybe Societe General isn't that good, but the first one, HSBC, it has no growth. So I guess that may also apply to Societe General. The next one is already Deutsche Bank. And when I look at this, already here, we have light green and it goes to red soon and there are a lot of zeros uh, in Europe. So the banking industry in Europe is really in a bad shape. Um, before I look at HSBC, I want to verify if that is really true, you know, if Europe is that bad. And I'm going to Google Europe banks undervalued to see if anybody says, you know, they're actually in a good, in a good condition, but nobody. The only thing I see from CNBC four days ago is that banks got a facelift in Europe, but they're still not pretty. It's not really an attractive market to invest in. So let's have still look at HSBC and you know, look what they have to offer uh, in terms of growth. They really have nothing, but they have revenue growth. So that's interesting because all the value ranks, instead of, you know, in, uh, except the, the revenue uh, multiple, all the other multiples are really good on the value side. Uh, and the revenue growth is really good. So I want to have a quick look at HSBC. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at their 3Q 2015 update. I get the la latest financial information. I have to scroll down a little bit to find the report. And here it is. I downloaded the report. And um, that's what they are just been saying yesterday. Actions to capture value from our global presence in a changed world. They reduce stuff. They sell operations. They want to rebuild the profitability. They want to build a ring-fenced bank. That sounds terrible. Uh, anyway, it looks like you have to know a lot to invest in this business. And maybe I'm just not knowledgeable enough. Uh, I want to move 
on to something else. I, I told you that there are focus stocks as well that we publish on November 6th, and we have Sound Incentives UK. I'm clicking on that, and I get a list of companies that have Sound Incentives, which means their management is better aligned with shareholders' interests from a financial perspective. They have better, um, better uh, incentive schemes. Royal Mail, I looked at, you know, in summer, they looked really boring. Let's have a look back at Vodafone because they really have good ratings, you know, 93 value, they're growing, they're quite safe. Let's look what they're doing. Um, so this is Vodafone in detail. I'm gonna go down and dig a little bit where do the growth metrics come from. They come from revenue growth, that's really good. They don't come from stock returns ranks. I like that, so they're still cheap. They have uh, not much leverage, they have enough li liquidity above average, actually above market, as long as you're above 50 or above market. That's really interesting. I'm going back up, I'm clicking on, on the Vodafone link, go to their website, have a look at their website, and uh, it looks like they have an updated, pretty modern website, quite fancy. Um, they've been even increasing their price just now, so maybe we are in a good move. Uh, I want to go a little bit deeper. I gonna, I'm looking at who we are, uh, what do we do investors, about them. Click on that and then I get a report, uh, a fact sheet of Vodafone PLC. And uh, what I see here is um, a chairman from 2011, a chief financial officer from 2008, uh, uh, chief executive officer from 2008, a uh, chief financial officer from 2014. Uh, this all sounds uh, like it's a solid company that has been there for a long time, but, but what I find most interesting is actually their footprint. They have quite a few operations in Africa, in Eastern Germany, in Turkey, in India, and I think that's where the future is for the world. I think the world is coming together. Uh, it's not easy, nice uh, at times. Uh, it's ugly at times, but I still think the development is unstoppable. So that's, for me, a good investment. Um, they also are quite sustainable. I looked further on their website, something I liked. They're into, you know, into supporting agriculture and all kinds of things. Uh, you can actually search through their website yourself. Uh, they do a lot of disclosure, um, really good governance. So what I'm doing is I'm going to my private banking. I'm looking at my portfolio. If I have already bought uh, Vodafone, it's not there yet, but I have actually, um, I have uh, here an order to buy, uh, it's actually bought, you know, I bought, uh, I bought Vodafone, no, it's still there, it's still there, we still have to buy the Vodafone stock, it's not there yet, but it, it, I put it in for 1,500 shares of Vodafone. That's the stock I bought today. Uh, thank you for listening and enjoy your own self-investing. Goodbye.